going to show you long and short stitch as soft shading. This is when the colours blend through one another to create this painterly effect. Now I'm going to show you how to use the double thread on the top layer of this long and short as soft shading. First of all, find your mouse's tail again, the longer piece, and pull gently, take it to your elbow and measure double that length. Leave a little length again, like that, and snip it off, and then go back to the fold to there. And then take your needle and push it down over that fold so that you take the wool all the way through so the loops at the far end and the short cut ends are next to the needle. To cast on with this double thread, go down into the linen in an area you're going to cover over later, preferably with the same colour. Take your loop and come up a stitch or two away and put the loop over your needle. So you're coming up through there and you're catching the thread. Next thing you do is give the thread a little bit of a pull and you'll see the bit you've just come up through. So go down the same hole. Go all the way down through and give a little tug and you should hear a little snap noise. And that's now just one double thread showing on the top like a single seeding stitch. Now that's enough and it means that you're not having to have knots all over the design. Come up in the centre of your shape and go down over the blue line. Go over the line, not to it, otherwise you'll end up with a little shadow. And take your needle all the way down with the two pieces of wool parallel like that. That's your first long stitch. The next stitch is about three quarters the length of the first one. Now this linen has actually worn a little bit slack while I've been stitching the stem stitch, so it's always worth checking. If you get a little bit of bounce in your stitch, give it another tug. So going back to this stitch, come up three quarters the length of the first one, like that, and then down in a parallel stitch, like that. Now this pair of stitches works away from that centre in both directions until you've made it work all the way along like this one. So I'll show you some of my stitching. When you get to the last few inches of wool, all you do is cast off with two or three little seeding stitches in exactly the same way as you did with the single thread. When you get to the end of your area, don't be bullied by the shape and make shorter and shorter stitches. Keep your long stitch as long as you can. And when this little hill runs out, I end up with satin stitches to cover the end of the area. You must have enough depth for the second colour to be able to come up through. Now I've finished this section, I just take the wool straight across the back of the work and continue in exactly the same way, heading across the other half. This thread will be tied in with the second colour. We're now going to do the second colour, the deeper green, on this little hill. I'm using a single thread for subtlety. We're going to use a waist knot on top of the fabric, like we did when we made the stem stitch. So put your knot on the top, like that, and work three little random seeding stitches to cast on. Next find your original stitch in the paler green. I call this my backbone stitch because it's usually in the centre of the design. And come up a quarter of the way from the edge of the design. So if your first stitch was an inch long, you're going to come up a quarter of an inch from the top of that stitch. So come up through the wool, splitting it or dividing it, it doesn't matter. Pull your wool through and then take it down in a straight line to the bottom edge. 
This area only has two colours. One of the distinguishing features of Corolla embroidery is that the backing linen remains